Konnichiwa, yo Squatch Boy Cock, back with another reaction video. And today, if you guys, we are doing part two on any new channel of Lancer Cool. This one is his abilities and and his MPs from Face Day Night Limited Blade Works part two. So, without ado, today, guys, uh, subscribe channel if you're new, hit the bell notification, make sure you click all, and also as well, slap that like button. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So, play. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of our look into Face Day Night's Lancer Cool Colin. This time diving more into his abilities and noble fantasy. I say cool, but he's gonna be in my top three, top five. Part one covering his past and lore, then you can go ahead and check that out from the link in the description below. We already it's read a pretty great death. story, uh, if I do say so myself. Yeah, it was right, good that's though. Out of the way, let's take a look at what Ireland's child of light. Did is I say any news? Before. Starting with his weapon. You guys want to see Richard gonna go to any new channel? Gaelbog, given to him by his mentor Skahawk and forged from the remains of the phantasmal sea monster known as Kuliad. There's also some pretty badass looking armor made from the beast's skeleton that's also used by Ku Cullen Altar. Ooh. But what exactly does hey, this that armor do? look the spirit sick itself on an alternate Ku? But instead can be used to activate abilities that are classified as noble phantasms. The first being a single target strike that's referred to as Gay Bolg, barbed spear that pierces with death. Now, this is an interesting ability because it reverses the laws of cause and effect to guarantee a strike that pierces the heart along with a thousand iron horns that are meant to explode it afterward. What I mean by that though is the nature of causality is flipped on its head to make the thrust of the spear the effect that comes from the piercing of the heart. If you still don't mm. understand, normally the yes. piercing of someone's heart is the result or effect that comes from the lance being thrust through the opponent. But with Gay Bulg, before the lance is even thrust, the opponent's heart has already been pierced. Wow, is that fast? The fact that the attack has gone through. In reality, it serves really no purpose. So basically, once the noble phantasm has been called upon, you're already dead. Well, you should be anyway, but we'll soon find out that that's not entirely the case. The lance being thrust or thrown does make a visual appearance like an illusion, that will always reach its opponent. Since the result of the heart being pierced has already taken place, that means that the spear will make contact with the location regardless of whether the opponent tries to dodge it or not. The lance shifts and turns at whatever angle is necessary to always match the result of the opponent's heart being struck. But as if getting your heart cut That's in half OB. by a barbed spear wasn't bad enough, you also get cursed with a wound that cannot be healed as long as the spear exists. So if you're capable of living without a heart or are lucky enough to dodge what's supposed to be an undodgeable attack, then yeah, you're stuck with the wound for a little while. But can we just take <laughs> the fact that Saber's rank in luck was high enough to beat a law? I mean, come on. Everything about this noble yeah, phantasm that, is that the that, action that of the heart is, being struck crazy, has already happened. So why is it that she's able to dodge an attack that's already taken place? I don't think even Astolfo had enough plot armor to beat the principles of cause and effect. So I can see now why people who are actually familiar with the finer details of the Fate series would be a little salty at the fact that certain characters can beat other servants who are clearly more powerful than them in ways that make the least amount of sense. But I digress. Now onto the spear's second noble phantasm, called Gebulg, Soaring Spear That Strikes With Death. And this is the spear's ultimate okay, attack. It so embodies what's the part of its mythology that, when it's thrown, thousands of barbs are projected. Oh, the throne, the throne version. Okay, yeah, because one of the converts all his magical it, energy actually, into raw energy like, using and it uses it, another it to way, toss the spear throwing with it. all his might at a speed of Mach 2, which then detonates on impact. The lance distorts space to create what's essentially an extended web of spears that all strike at once. The number in his legend was said to be around 30, but it's gone upward with his power as a servant. Once again, this attack is said to be undodgeable, and even though Archer's Roias nullified it, it really shouldn't have. Then there's also two more noble phantasms associated with the weapon, but they're used by Kukul and Altar and Protolancer, so it's not entirely relevant here. All in all though, this spear is not something that a lot of servants should be able to handle, if any, especially when he's able to cast the first noble phantasm at least seven times before requiring more mana. It just seems to me that our Lancer over here has a bad case of having to deal with overpowered protagonists. I'm sure if there was an unlucky <laughs> spirit, the Lancers would be maxed out. Moving on, Lancer also has the ability to use 18 Norse runes that any villain or power protagonist say I do it. They're very situational, <laughs> like and we reason. don't see them often in the anime, but they are showcased every now and then. For example, he uses a rune to set the room on fire where he dies. He also uses runes to make his armor more powerful. And if he's able to carve out all 18 runes on the ground, a barrier will be erected that can block the attack of a fairly powerful noble phantasm. Basically, different combinations of different runes result in different things. 
There's sort of like a separate skill kit that can be used individually or combined to give him a few benefits in certain situations. Then there's his skills like protection from arrows, which allows him to dodge any type of ranged attack as long as the opponent is visible, and it's not a noble phantasm with an area of effect type impact. So he also any archer that he can see, none of their moves are really going to matter from far range. Agility, strength, hmm. and, speed. Okay. and the final skill I'll point out is his battle continuation. This is what allowed him to get back up after literally stabbing himself in the heart. He embodies the aspect of his legend where he was always fighting solo against mass armies for days on end in countless battles that should have killed him, thus resulting in a servant that is very hard to kill. Lancer will only stop fighting after he receives a decisively fatal blow, but on top of that, he will stay alive for a period of time afterward, allowing for him to save Rin all while dying from a pierced heart. Now here's some conditional things about Lancer. He qualifies to be also summoned that as That scene was so sad. I was so pissed at that, man. That, that was like, wow, really? And he gains a significant number of boosts. I think in phase zero is the same way for him, too. So his master told, basically Being used the shield to kill him. To his castle noble phantasm, which I would imagine to be a fortress, not quite on the scale of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, but probably something similar. And that's Lancer's abilities in noble phantasms. I'm sure you're already aware that he's very capable at fighting close and long range with his lance. So going into his combat abilities isn't really necessary when you can just go watch it in Unlimited Blade Works. But yeah, final opinion, he's a lot more badass than I initially thought he was. And he got super shafted in the anime. I'm pretty sure Archer and Saber shouldn't have survived their fight with him. But if that happened, we wouldn't have a show to watch. Let me know in the comments if you think that he should right, so plot armor. I'm curious to know how you guys thought the anime should have gone. Yeah, so basically plot so, yeah, armor is the reason why he two. wasn't able to Sorry win against out, Archer and Saber, honestly. Because yeah, uh, Kuhn, aka Lancer from uh, Face Day Night, Limited Blade Works, that dude is, I do not know, like I said, that's why he's in my top like three to five. So there's like Gilgamesh, uh, Gilgamesh, King of Sun. Might be cool number three. And then like uh, that guy that like sword literally is part of his hand and then it can literally like extend to like other planets and be as big as colossal like enemy. That stuff's crazy. Anyway, um like I say guys, um cool Lancer uh part two with his no phantasm and abilities. Uh let me know what you think about leaving a comment down below. Also leaving a like on this video and sub another the video if you do. Uh try oh no, wait, 900 subs man. Uh really uh, really do, I really am blessed to have all you guys that are su subscribed to the channel because i won't even think this is even possible and i'm still not even at that 1k mark yet uh which is like that that first benchmark for me honestly and then like if i could get there if i'm blessed enough to get there then I just keep it going man like it's like i said it's crazy like just doing what i like just looking at anime react to it and just having you guys like seeing the videos man like i really like i'll be seeing some of the comments too it'd be like um you you do great videos um enjoy your content stuff like that watching um glad you're enjoying watching fade and everything like that like i from the bottom of my heart i really like appreciate that so without further ado guys um like subscribe in the video i'm hit the button make sure you click all number of time making future uploads blank i'm out peace